This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. On today's repair video, we're going to look at this commercial grade Toro that's a decent age super recycler. Guy I fixed a John Deere LT133 for said, you think this would be number one worth getting running? And the answer is yes. Number two, would it, you know, be able to get running so that he could use it? Or if he doesn't use it, potentially resell it and you know, make some money back. And I said, well, we'll give it a look. I think we're going to be okay. All the cables and stuff are free. It pulls. I just don't have any spark right now. So I don't know if it's because um, we have a bad ignition coil or if we have um, a ground wire that's grounded out somewhere or something along those lines. Once we get all that sorted out, it's probably just a matter of like putting a pull rope in it and probably cleaning the carburetor or putting a new carburetor on it. And I told them that um, you know, if I only had like about an hour or so worth of work in it, and at the worst, the carburetor probably would sell for more than what he's paying to get it fixed. We'll see. We'll get into it and see what happens. Let's get started. So y'all know I've worked on a lot of these Quantums, and this one has no spark. I've already taken the ignition coil off. All it is is you take a couple of bolts off the gas tank, four bolts off of the um, cover, and uh, a couple of quarter inch bolts off for the ignition coil. I've got them over here. I'll show you the one that I that came on it and the one that I think is good uh, that I had in my stash. So this is the one that came on it. We're checking ohms for continuity and what we have on this one is a like four and some change ohms. So I've got this and then we'll do that. I can't even get a reading now for some reason. Maybe I'm in, maybe I'm backwards here. Okay. So I just got a reading. It's kind of all over the place. Well, it was, but but it's consistently reading at about 4.7, 4.8 ohms. And then the one that I believe is good here is reading in the sixes, like right at six. See, like right at 6.2. So. Since I've got this one here, I'm just going to slap it on, see if that gives me any spark. And if it does, then we already are in a good uh, good position to continue moving on here. This coil cosmetically looks pretty good. It's a little bit of rust and stuff on it, but nothing crazy. Uh, not sure why it just it's not sparking because it's got full continuity um, and the wire is not broken. So. So I've turned the lights off. I've, I'm just going to pull this and hopefully y'all be able to see. Uh, there's some spark here. I know that there is because I just pulled it and it tried to start up on me. So Yeah, you can see it. So that ignition coil, I guess, was bad. So I'm just going to put a pull rope on it. I've got to plug this wire back in. I knew it was coming. This is coming back off anyways. So I just got to put a pull rope in it and uh, see if that, see if that'll work for us. And hopefully in terms of the spark will be good and then we'll turn the fuel system, which hopefully will just be a quick, uh, we're just going to pop a carb on it and probably call it a day. Or we might just put gas in it and see what happens. I'm not even sure at this point. But we do need to put a fuel line on it. So I am going to do that. Y'all seen me put a pour rope and everything and stuff in, in this before. All you got to do is pull it out as far as you 
want to put it put a screwdriver in it cut off the ends measure the length of the same rope keep the tension spring on push your push your new pull rope in and then put your end on and then wind it back and you're good to go so we have even more good news after i did all that i primed it up here a few times and it actually starts so that may just mean that the jet needs to be cleaned out in the car but y'all see me do that quite a bit of times too i'll show you what you need to do it's just a 5 sixteenths to take the air filter off you have two more five or three more 5 sixteenths to take the backing plate off and a couple of 3 eighths to take the carb off take the linkage off the top here and slide it out or slide it out and then take the linkage off and you have the carb off so we're going to look at that here in just a second and we'll see if the jet's clogged if it is maybe we can save this carb as long as the gaskets aren't so dried out that they collapse whenever we pull it out. Let me demonstrate since we're here. 5 sixteenths. So I know it's priming, it's just not staying running. We'll pull that. Gasket seems good, that's good. I need to get something to cut off that fuel line so we'll pinch this off probably end up replacing that while we're here too it's starting to crack it's a little corroded on the inside hopefully it won't have too much corrosion in here because if we do we're just gonna slap a new carb on and call it a day I think so that's it right there uh, let me take it over to the bench we'll get a half inch on the bottom of this take it off see how bad it is inside on the bench let's take a look i have a feeling it's going to be a little bit of corrosion but it can't be but so bad right it still primes so keep that on there gaskets are staying that's good actually it's not bad at all in here that's great Hey, that's actually really good so I'm guessing that this jets just got a clog in it it does that's easy fix right there so just grab a wire slide it through the jet right there and get a little carb spray as well Okay, I can see the jet going through there. Let me grab the carb spray. And we should see it shooting out of the passages on the side. And we do, that's great. So, now, Just gonna give it a quick clean here. Slide a little bit of I mean I know all this is good because it's priming and that's half the battle on these things, so I know this thing is nasty. We'll put it back on. 
Y'all saw how I took everything off. I'm just going to put everything back together the same way. Change the fuel line out on it. We're going to pop it in and see if we can see if we have a runner. I think we might. If we do, that'll be great because all that, that means he'll have a uh, just a carb clean, an ignition coil, which is the going to be the biggest deal, pull rope, and uh, some oil. Man, probably be back in business just with that. So, uh, next we'll try it out. Well, I've done all those said things. Put it all back together. And we'll see if this thing will crank for us and run. Runs great. I'm gonna finish this thing up. Uh, just give it a wash for them, and put the cover back on, and we're done here, guys. Uh, I'm gonna lube up the cables just a little bit too. I do need to change the throttle cable and move that up over a little bit uh, so that the throttle actually powers down some, as opposed to what it is currently doing. Let's see what it looks like cleaned up. So we have cleaned it up. I ran it for a little while. It ran good and then all of a sudden started surging for some reason. I was like, man, what in the world? No debris in the carburetor or anything. Or there was debris in the carburetor the first time. I cleaned it, put it back together. It was still doing it. So I was like, what in the world? I drilled out the jet on it and that seemed to have fixed everything. So uh, that's good. I'll show you that it runs and throttles down and stuff too. So that's good um, yeah I'll give you a quick little illustration as to what I deal with the jet y'all see me clean these carburetors a lot so I think you have got the gist of how to take them off at this point uh, so let me show you a sample jet and I'll show you what I did as we wrap this video up so as we wrap this up number one this thing turned out great um, the guy who had it, he stored it pretty well. Just had a, just a tiny bit of buildup in the carburetor. Um, really hard to get all the gas out, but y'all saw the carburetor was pretty empty when I opened it up, so that was a positive. I was thinking that this thing might be trashed. Luckily, it was not. 
anyways, here's a jet. This is not the jet. But what I did is I had a micro drill bit set and one of these and just popped it in here and just drilled it out. Now this jet's a little bit bigger than the one that was in here. Um, the one that was in here was about seven, somewhere between 75 thousandths and 80 thousandths. So I took, and I didn't even go to 90 thousandths, I went to 85 thousandths and just drilled it out. That seemed to have um, cured all the issues that I had with prolonged surging, especially after it ran for a while. So that's a good thing. And that fixes this mower for this guy. He's still good on um, being able to sell it and still make a couple of bucks off of it. I make money off of it for fixing it for him. He makes money off of it by selling it. It's a win-win for everybody. So, and I just wanted to show you all that these Toros are just fantastic mowers. I don't even know how old this thing is. I have not checked. I would guess that it's probably an early 2000s model. He said it's been sitting up for a couple of years and everything still works on it. Everything still works on it, which is a, which is a huge plus. Um, the deck's in good shape. It's that aluminum deck. It's in good shape. Everything I saw was in good shape on this mower. So he got a good one. Um, I got a relatively easy one to fix, which I'm always happy about. So thank you all again for watching. Thank you for your support over these past six years. I, I do enjoy getting out here and making these videos for you all. Uh, don't feel the pressure of having to do so many during the growing season because I'm able to work on stuff during the off season now since I have the home renovations complete as of uh, March of 2022. So it makes it a little bit more uh, relaxing when I do uh, pull the camera out. Hopefully it makes for better videos for you all to watch as well. Thank you all again. Let me know about these Toros. And do you still think that the Toro is, or that Toro makes the best consumer grade push mower still? Let me know in the comments section. My personal opinion, everybody I go out that I say, you know, do you, that wants to buy a new mower, that doesn't want to pay out the wazoo for one, I say go get a Toro. Right now you can still get a Honda, this is the last year for him, though, unfortunately. So, this tour, at least, is still lasting and will live on another life with another owner. Y'all have a good one. Catch you on the next video.